be here tonight. Uh, I'm trying to reposition myself. We're trying to limit the wind as much as possible. I, they thought maybe if I face this way, we'll see if that sounds any better. But I'm honored to be here to speak with all of you. Sounds like there's still a lot of wind. But um, literally, Dave and Michelle are two of probably the best people and most transparent and kindest people I've ever met. So to share time with them is an absolute honor. Um, I'm here tonight to share probably one of the most difficult things that I've ever stood in front of people to say because I'm really embarrassed um, to talk about it and um, so it's really hard. So I hope that you'll indulge me a little bit. I just want to tell you about my story of faith about someone who, um, even though they were a Christian, still failed and still sinned, still messed up, but that God is so good and He is so forgiving and He is so kind. My story starts uh, when I was pretty young. I grew up in a Christian family. I, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior when I was five or six years old. I um, tried my best. I was a very compliant kid. Uh, I listened to my parents. I did what I was supposed to do. I never got in trouble. But inside, I was scared. And what I was most scared of is that the people that loved me were going to die. I remember being six, seven, eight years old, worried about it all the time because I thought the only people in this world that loved me were my grandparents on my mom's side, my mom and dad, and my brother and sister. And that was the six people and that was it. And even though I knew God, I didn't really understand how much he loved me. And I was terrified that one of those six people was going to die. And I spent many nights worried and crying uh, thinking about what would happen if they died. I never liked death, and in fact, I remember being pretty young. I don't know how old I was when a Sunday school teacher said, it's okay, it's good when people die. When they know Jesus, they'll go to heaven. And I remember thinking, that does not sound good to me. I do not want the people, that, especially one of the only six people I know that love me, to die and leave me all alone in this world that's hard. But as I grew, I continued to... Um, have God guide me in my life, and he, he, he guided me in that he wanted me to go to school, and so I went there, and I studied the Bible for four years, and I got a degree, and then he wanted me to go to seminary, so I went to seminary three more years, got a, I got a degree, and then I finally was out, uh, and then, so I don't know, 20 years ago, a little more, um, and then I was in my first church, and uh, when I was at my first church, uh, one of those six people, my grandfather, the first of those six people, he got got really sick. And um, when he got really sick, I got really scared. And he didn't have too many other people around. So I remember I would go to the hospital every morning and I would try to be with him and then come back to the church and try to do all the work that I could. And I remember the Friday that he came in and he had an infection in his leg, an infection of blood, and they said he had to have his leg taken off. And he didn't want that to happen. Um, but I, I, I said, I don't know, that's what the doctors are saying you should do. And I remember he looked at me and he said, Johnny Mark, that's what he called me, he's like, if you think I should do it, then I'll do it. Because you've always done right by me. And so he did. But after the surgery, he slipped into a coma. And those would be the last words I ever said to my grandfather. Or he ever said to me. So I went back to my church. And I was working well into the evening. I don't know, it was dark. And I remember someone called me from church. Someone who um, volunteered and helped the church. And they asked me how my grandfather was going. And I told them. And I was so broken up inside about it. And they said, why don't you stop over at my house? And uh, I remember even God telling me in my head, he's like, don't go. But I said, I don't know, God, I, don't, you know, I feel like you're not even helping me here. Like, I'm so broken up. I feel so alone and so lost. I just need someone to talk to, someone to do something with. So I showed up at this person's house, and... Uh, it was a lady from church, and um, she was married, but when I went in, I found out her husband wasn't there. And so I went in, and 
she just embraced me and I just started crying. <laughs> and then she hugged me and then she started to kiss me and then I kissed her back and we kissed and stuff like that for a while and then I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And so I left and I, uh, I stayed up all night. So disappointed, it's so crazy with myself. And uh, well, I, I called the conference in the morning and I called the uh, church and I, I told them what happened and I offered to, to resign. And uh, that was hard. And, uh, but I knew that I have to be honest and I have to tell the truth. And I'm so embarrassed to admit that, that I lacked faith in God. And uh, that night then I had to tell my uh, parents, my brother, my sister, my grandma, everyone else that I knew. My grandma didn't even believe me. I had to tell her like three times because she wouldn't believe it. And I thought, I'm so stupid, I've thrown my entire life away. I spent four years going to school, three years going to seminary, hundreds of hours of study, tens of thousands of dollars. And now I don't even have a job, I have nothing. And when I look back on it these 20-some years later, I, I think really it was about a lack of trust in God, trust that God actually loved me, that he was going to provide for me. And I was so stupid because I thought in this moment of when I was really hurting, that I believe this lie that that God couldn't give me enough at that moment and that uh, when I really needed comfort I didn't trust God enough that he was going to comfort me and so that Monday morning my grandfather died and I was the only one with him as he died and he passed into the next world and I remember thinking to myself things are never ever going to be okay again in fact, I remember, and I'm so ashamed to admit this, I know Julie shared last night about Pop, she was a Christian, and she thought about dying. I, I wished I was dead. I felt like I, this pain is never going to go away, and I would never want to harm myself because of the pain it would cause to other people. But I remember thinking to God, could you just please let me have a, a car accident or something that I could die, and then there wouldn't be any guilt for anyone else, but that I wouldn't be here anymore to have to deal with that pain. And how many times I wished over the last two decades that I could go back and I could change that one night of when I lacked faith in God and how stupid I was. But God is good. He really is good, as Michelle said. He never stops working in people's lives. And so when you're faithful to him, he will continue to work and be with you and guide you. It took me a long time because I, I hurt people at church and I, I hurt my family and I hurt myself and I, I hurt other people. And it took a long time to help heal those scars and I know that I caused them and I can't rectify them. I can't go back in time at least, but I can live my life in a way that I'm honest and transparent and vulnerable and to share who God is. So. God has been so kind to me in those last two decades, and he has blessed me in so many ways, like when he brought Michelle into my life, and then I realized that he really does love me, and that I can totally trust him, and it wasn't just those six people, but that God really loved me, and I remember when um, I got back into ministry, and um, I got a call here about um, coming to this church eight years ago, and I remember talking to the search committee, at least one of them is here right now, and I, rem I remember where Stu was sitting and some of the other people, and I remember them asking about this, and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to have to talk about this, this is hard, and I thought, well, well, once I shared all of that that I just shared with all you guys, they'll never want to hire me, but then I remember Ralph Shear was on the search committee, called me the next day, and Ralph was like, my gosh, that was perfect. And I was like, perfect? Oh. Okay. Um, 
But anyway, what I wanted to share is because I know what it's like to be hurt. Because a lot of people have this idea in their head, like, I don't know, some people and pastors and other people, they have everything all together. And their lives are perfect and they're right and stuff. They, uh, everyone has sin. Everyone has errors. Everyone has mistakes. Things that they can't change. But that God is good. And He is working in and through even the mistakes and sin of our lives to bring something good out of it. And I want to transition to, to talking about something that... The, or you have a juxtaposition about how I felt and, and my response when my grandfather died because um, I lost someone else in that six on February 26, 2021. At uh, 1.59 in the afternoon, my dad died very suddenly. <laughs> he was only 62 years old and I, I just thought he was going to be around so much longer. And I think about him every day, and I have every, every day since he's died. But I, I remember that there is a little bit of a difference. <laughs> because now I know I can trust God, and my response is different, because I wasn't as afraid of being all alone. I even remember the day before my dad died. Uh, I'm not a person who just looks up new songs or new-to-me songs on YouTube, but there was a song by Crowder. And there was a lyric that said, Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. And that song, just on the 25th of February, just kept playing in my head all day long. And I knew in the weeks that happened that God was trying to tell me and he was preparing me because he knew that my dad was going to pass away from this earth the next day. In fact, he knew before I was born. He knew before my dad was born that that would be the day that he would leave this world. As he knows the day when all of us will leave this world, because we're all going to leave this world. And I didn't understand, and maybe I still don't always understand why God does what he does, but God knows. And I don't need to know. But I do remember when my dad died, I was, I was sad, and I was even a little angry, and I was even a little angry and bitter at God just for a moment, because he had never gotten a chance to retire, and he, he was so close to retiring and all the things that he had wanted to do and travel and see and that just broke my heart for him. But then God in his infinite wisdom and grace and kindness revealed to me that all the places my dad wanted to see like Alaska and the Rocky Mountains and all the beauty of God's nature, that if he allowed that beauty to be on this earth, then surely, surely the grandeur of heaven Amen. is far greater. Amen. And so the beauty that my dad gets to walk and to see and to experience every day is far greater than any vacation that he would have had. And I also understand and trust in God now that I understand far better than I did when I was much younger that the separation that I have with my dad is very temporary from the perspective of heaven. That I'll see my dad and my grandfather again. And that I'm not lost from that love forever. In fact, now I can even greatly feel God's love in a, in a much more tangible way than I did when I was younger. Because I know that um, what God has always wanted and what he wanted me to be it was a part of his family. But I was too stupid because I kind of thought, like Michelle, I thought God was kind of more like my boss. And the difference there, of course, is that your boss is only happy with you when you're doing what you want, when he, what he wants you to do. But if you didn't do something to please him, then he didn't really care about you that much. You were disposable. And even as a pastor, I was so dumb that sometimes, deep down inside, if I was truly honest with myself, that's how I felt. But it was a lie. Because I had it all wrong. God didn't want me to obey him. Because then he would love me. He already loved me. He already loved me totally and perfectly. And the reason he wanted me to obey him is to avoid the pain and the problems and the sins and failures of this world. And that when I'm able to obey him, I'm showing love back to him who's already shown perfect love to me. To understand that there will be a time of being reunited with the people that I love, that he's inviting me in to be that family. He's inviting every single one of us to be a part of that family. 
You see, so many of us are afraid to come to God because we think that God isn't going to like us. And he's certainly not going to love us if he really knew what was totally inside of us. So we try to hide from him. Because we think maybe God's going to respond to me with anger or apathy or something. We fear that if God would see the very worst part of me, he would reject me. But that is not God. That is not the way God is. God will not reject you. He loves you totally and perfectly just the way you are. But he draws you to him because in his love, he wants to make you better than you are. He wants you to be as he always intended you to be. You see, if we played any of our lives like a movie, there would be things that we would chuckle at and we would laugh at, and there would be things we would get angry at or sad at, and there would be things that we would want to walk out here with an embarrassment about. Because I know in every single one of our lives there have been times when we have been mean and we have been cruel, when we have misused our sexuality, when we've allowed hate or pride or stupidity to just overwhelm us in our lives. Because we're sinners. We sin. We disobey God. We're not perfect. But God allows us to know the one who is perfect. Yes. Who is Him. Who allows us to grant us some of His perfection. Yes. That works in our lives to bring about sanctification. To make us better than we are. Yes. Yes. To make us who He wants us to be. Sometimes we're so stupid, we try to even hide sin from God. Spoiler alert, He's already seen it. You can't hide anything from God. He has seen the absolute best of you, but he has also seen the worst of you. The best and the worst, and he still loves you fully and perfectly. But he has seen sin in your life. Why does God hate sin? Not because he hates you, but because he knows that sin is like a cancer that is eating your life away. It's killing you. And God says, I can't eradicate that cancer. I can remove it from your life if you allow me to do it. I am the greatest physician that has ever lived. And I will take that cancer away. God is reaching out to all of us. He sees whatever that cancer is in each and every one of our lives. And he wants to remove it so that we can know him better and more fully. God forgave me. God will forgive you. He invited me to fully be a part of his family. To fully be loved with no fear of ever being rejected by my heavenly father. And he is asking or calling each one of you. That if you don't know him as father, he's saying, come, sit at my table. You are not an employee. You don't have to earn my favor. You don't have to be good enough. I want you to be in my family. Everything I have is yours. Everything that I know I want you to experience. I love you totally and fully. And if you come to me, all I ask is you give your life to me. And when you give it to him, you realize you were stupid for holding on to it. Because when you let go, God is going to use your life in a way that is more blessed than you could ever even imagine. God created us with a need for Him. We were made that way. Every single one of us. If you don't know Him, don't leave here today without. And maybe you were like me. You were a Christian. But in this some moment, some time in your life, or maybe that moment is now, and you didn't trust Him enough, and you... You walked away what God said not to do, and you sinned against God. God loves you. Amen. He's calling you back. Give it to Him. Stop hanging on for it. You're not perfect. You're never going to be perfect. Amen. Not on this side of heaven. But God will take that, that sin, and He will use it for His glory if you are brave enough to give it to Him. Yes. Amen. If you ever need prayer, I invite you at any time to go down talk to the prayer people, get resources, but at this time, I'm going to invite Miss Hope to come up and to share.